Hey, Cracked fans, just a quick message before we start today's interview with TCU head coach David Roditi. Unfortunately, I was not able to have my recording equipment with me when we did this interview, such is life. I, In case you listeners can't tell, and how could you with all the podcasts we do, but I do have a life outside of these podcasts, and unfortunately that got the better of me, but we did not want to leave you hanging. We wanted you all to have something to listen to, to get away from your family if you need a break from what is hopefully a lovely Thanksgiving holiday for all of you listeners. Um, so with that in mind, the audio quality, not quite as good as usual, but still plenty, plenty quality enough to have this interview be played for you guys. You will enjoy today's conversation with Coach Roditi, who we've obviously had on before, a notable personality in the college tennis world and someone we were really excited to talk to. Um, we previewed his TCU men's tennis team. They were the number 10 team in last year's year-end rankings on the men's side. So we talked about them, Matt and Matt, Chris Halioris, and I on our College Contender Series a couple of weeks ago. Did not have the chance to talk to him then. We did have the chance to talk to him now, so obviously we took that. And we had a wonderful conversation spanning on his team, this year's products, how you recover from losing a player like Alex Rybakov, bringing in all the freshman talent they did, how they acclimate to the current roster, uh, you know, what that prospects look like, how they reflect on the fall play, all the fun things you want to hear about the team as they head into the 2020 season. We also had the chance to talk about some fun proposals, much like we did on the mini break with the ITA's Dave Mullins. Uh, just some fun addendums we would make to college tennis to make it just a little bit more fan friendly, maybe a little bit more fun. So, with that, enjoy mine, Chris Halioris's conversation with the one and only David Roditi. Welcome back, Cracked fans, to another edition of the Cracked Interviews podcast. I'm your host, Alex Gruskin. As you can tell from our recent college uh, tennis content, we are eager to get you all ready for the 2020 dual match season. So much great tennis ahead of us, and obviously with there being a bit of a break in the professional season, this is the time when we can focus on those other aspects of tennis that are so great, like college tennis. We have been conducting our College Contenders preview series both on our website, CrackRackets.com, and on our mini break podcast as a feature of that contender series, we have been fortunate enough to interview the coaches of the teams we have talked about thus far, Mississippi State, USC, UNC. But the first team we talked about, we did not have the chance to bring on that coach in the moment. We are so fortunate to be able to bring him in now. I will, if he will indulge me, at my introduction for him, though he may lack ever so slightly in height, his competitive spirit and relentless energy all Always have him and his teams ready for the fight. A horned frog since 1993. He's made Fort Worth the place where college tennis fans want to be. A man who will make all of your tennis dreams come true. Ladies and gentlemen, it's TCU head coach Dave Rodini of TCU. Coach, welcome to the Crack Interviews podcast. Thank you, Alex. That was great. Appreciate it. Uh, Thank you. It's great to be uh, here. Uh, so well, it's so lovely to have you back. Obviously, all college tennis fans are a fan of your voice, but also joining us today, a man who I don't know if you heard the co- uh, pod coach, but is quite high on your TCU men's horde frog this year. The forefather of college ranks, uh, tennis ranks dot com formula predictions that are never far from the listed UTR. One of the many dames who now roots for the Liberty Flames, Chris Halliores. Welcome back to the Crack Interviews podcast. Ah, oh, good to be here, Alex. Good to good to talk, coach. Thank you, Chris. Great seeing you. Yeah. Or great speaking with you. Appreciate the the predictions. I hope you're right. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah, of course. And coach, the, part of the reason we are so excited to have you on, uh, obviously your TCU frogs last year uh, ended the season so well. We're one of the few teams to go on the road in the round of 16 to get a win in advance to the quarterfinal stage, knocking off Chris's um, MSU Bulldogs. Uh, but for your team, obviously this offseason, you le- lose a huge leader, a huge voice, a huge presence in your lineup in Alex Rybakov, who was part of us, uh, you know, three of the past four years winning big 12 12 regular season titles, and I want to start our conversation there. What hap- you know, what is the significance for your team when you lose a player of Alex Rybakov's caliber? 
Well, um, I mean, you're right. You, you, it's it's impossible to to replace somebody like Alex uh, on the court, off the court, in the locker room, everywhere. I would say, I would say, not just TCU tennis lost a, a, a great guy. He, he, it's graduating, but uh, TCU, TCU as a university, it's a guy that I, I haven't looked at the record books, but he won student athlete of the year and scholar athlete of the year uh, on the same year he, this last year. So I, I don't know if that has ever been done or if that would ever be, or that would ever be done. So it's, um, we'll, we'll miss him. Uh, I think uh, a lot of our guys, if we have four or five guys that were, in the same with with him for three years so let's hope that something rubbed off and these guys are ready to to take on the lead sorry guys my kids tell me he's got a pee pee jeez is that the first time on your podcast no oh, that's an all-time moment i mean that that's that's got to be that i mean that's that's very fitting and appropriate for the two of us <laughs> <laughs> I, I apologize for that Oh, no, don't worry about it. Um, but, you know, you talk about some of those guys, uh, the talent Rybakov has uh, ha- and what his leadership presence meant to those other guys. You do bring back a ton of other starters in Alistair Gray, Luke Famba, Sander Jung, Burtis Kruger, uh, Juan Martin. Uh, and so when you have a base like that returning, how, after you make the quarterfinals lose the way you did, but have that sort of moment, how do you as a coach approach the off season with that group of returners? Yeah, I mean, we, we, it was pretty obvious, pretty obvious for them to step up. I think every year is, is different and it was sort of the big white elephant. So there was not, not much to say, to say, uh, Devin Bowen, he's, He's on it. He's on it every day. He doesn't lose a beat. I think the practicing today, tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, so Thanksgiving doesn't really matter. These guys are out there. So we, we approach the same way, just trying to make the most out of every day and look and to, to, to get better. And and we're doing a little team building in, in, in January. We have we have three new guys, as you know, and then a big core group that we're keeping from the from the years before, so we we felt it's very important to start off in the right in the right way as far as a team goes. So we're gonna do a little team building in January. We have the we same are. exact lineup or team for next year. So this team will be exactly the same for two years. Uh, we don't lose anybody. So we thought, you know, why not? Why not invest in this team and make sure that they come together and and see what we what what they can do in the next two seasons. So, coach, uh, talk, talking about the new guys, you got, you bring in you know Yurishak, Paralek, and Fernley, three uh, I mean three really talented guys that in my mind are the top recruiting class by far this year that can play anywhere in the lineup. You know, you can slot any one of those guys in anywhere you like. Why don't you give us a little overview on on these guys and how they've been doing this fall? Yes. Um, yeah, we're we're very pleased with our recruiting class. Uh, Thomas Jurasek will arrive in January, so we haven't seen him on a daily basis. We like what we've seen so far. I think he'll bring a different personality. He's uh, he's gonna be uh, he's gonna be a handful in a good way on a daily basis. He's gonna be the one that uh, is probably gonna paint himself in purple during game days and that kind of stuff. <laughs> so that's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm probably going to have a blast with him just uh, just coming up with uh, different ideas for him to to enjoy being in college. Um, you know, I always say I always say I'll let you know how good our recruiting class is in four years because you never know. There's one thing it's on paper and then how they turn out, you know, four years later. But 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 it, it is a good start. Uh, Jacob Fernley from Scotland came highly recommended by the uh coaches in the in the Great Britain as, as a person and we, we couldn't agree more. He's been he's been great. His attitude is great. Uh, works hard every day. Uh, he's got some huge weapons. He's his forehands already he's already made uh, an impact this fall. He had a great result this last tournament getting to the finals of the future, beating a really really good round in the semifinals against a Longhorn. It's always nice to beat anybody in our conference, especially uh, new Longhorn. So, so on paper is looking great. We're, we're excited. And then Tadez, we call him Teddy Parlek. He's uh, from the Czech Republic. 
they're a year older when they come from the Czech Republic, so we expect him to be a little bit, you know, more mature than your typical freshman. Uh, he's he's had a lot of experience. I mean, he'll play 30, 35 futures a year. So we're we're sort of counting on that international experience, counting on him playing lots and lots of matches. Lineup wise, who knows? Who knows where they all fit in? We'll kind of see where they go. But as as you said, I feel like they they could go just about anywhere. So we'll see how the the chips fall and uh, you know see what what we can do with them. But we're we're very excited about it. And coach, I know you had the chance to go on the ITA coaches pod that Dave Mullins is doing to talk a little bit about the coaching just at large position and your approach to that position. But you mentioned the fact that your team now is in a position where you could have a bunch of them for two, three, four years now together. And I'm curious from a coaching perspective, do you take a long-term view even as you approach this season? Can you now coach with let's, and maybe you're always doing this coach with, you know, four years in mind, as opposed to just the immediate season. Yeah, we, we're we're heavily into development. We've we've made decisions in the past where we may not get the most out of them immediately in the short term, but we know for them it's their best in the long term. It's it's not easy. It's 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 hard. It's hard to make those kind of decisions. Uh, but uh, we feel that if if we can if we can do what Cameron Noy has done out there and we can repeat that and, and get more, more guys to get that kind of success out on the tour, then number one, recruiting should, should get easier. You would think so. And, uh, and you get a lot out of it, a lot of satisfaction out of knowing that you made a, a quite a big difference in their, in their game. So we do take a four year approach. I would say even more of a five to eight year approach uh, Cameron Norris is, is in town right now. Alex Rybakov is arriving in a few days. Uh, they're training here. Reese Stolder is here every day, training when he's not competing, and Nick, Nick Chapel. So it's that's part of what we wanted. We wanted this to be a sort of a, a home base for them, not just for four years, for the next 10 years, 12 years, whatever they're out there on the tour, and for them to know that that we have their back and and. And regardless of the of the team part, that we want the best for them. And uh, Devin Bowen, he's he's the one that heads all of that. He's spends 100% of his time on the guys, on the guys on the team, on the guys on the tour. And I'm very thankful. I'm very lucky to have somebody like Devin that can take that uh, because it would be, as you know, it takes a lot of time to to be able to help a guy like Cameron Norris still takes takes a lot of detail a lot of thinking and and with two kids and and um, a real life uh, i don't i i can't do it so devin has the expertise he's got the motivation he's got the know-how so that's that's sort of something that we tactically put in place um and we we'll hope that that uh, 10 years from now you, we can look back and say yeah that's exactly what happened with our program this may be a nerdy question but does it get competitive between the old guys and the new team? And would you say that spirit of competitiveness, I mean, that's something that you build your program on. That's something that you're shooting for. I mean, good competitiveness. I don't think, you know, tennis players, we're, we're very competitive by nature. And so it's, yeah, it's good. It's good to see uh, the other day, Reese Tolder was playing with, with Jacob Fernley. We, we call him Jake and Jake was basically toying with him and, and, and Reese, you could tell Reese was getting a little frustrated, but in, in, in a good way. And we were, you know, we we're kind of poking at him like, wow, there's <laughs> zero respect here. The guy just arrived a month ago and he's already kind of toying with you. So, and you know, we, we, they know, they know, I, I feel like we do a good job of letting a guy like Nick Chapel, for example, know that, this all started with him in his class, him and Facundo Lugones and our now docs, Max Stevens, JT Selling, those guys got, got it all started. Um, so they, they know that even though they've been gone for a while, that they had a lot to do with what TC tennis is today. Um, so I, you know, we, we haven't had any, 
any bad competitiveness. It's been it's been great. It's been great. And Devin, again, credit to Devin. Devin is the one that creates that, and he's extremely professional. And um, I always kind of joke about Devin does all the work, and I talk about it. <laughs> you don't need any help promoting, Coach, but should you want to throw the Crack Rackets TCU alumni event, we do old team versus current team, I'm there. Okay, you know, that'd be uh, – yeah, that'd be fun. That'd be fun. Yeah. You know, you got you got a guy like Guille Nunez who would probably uh, hit for ten minutes and be playing just the same level as he did before. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it would be in fun. And you know, I forgot to, to mention Jerry Lopez. He's out there. You know, he's won a couple of futures and he just lost in a battle to Nick Chapel in the semis. So that was interesting to see two horn frogs playing each other in the semis of a future. Um, yeah, you know what? That 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 could be a lot of fun. I'm. I'm Really proud to say and happy to say that that would be that would be some good tennis. We we know, Coach. I, I as much as I love your your class, you, you probably started off with Gruskin, and it, it finally is going to be in the doghouse now because I don't know if you know this, but Gruskin had a serious man crush on Reese Stalder. I mean, I mean, he couldn't say I, enough good stuff about Reese last year. So so if Fernley's <laughs> toying with him, he's already out in Gruskin's book. Yeah, well, you know, I did know that. We talked about that. And, uh, and, and Reese is one of a kind. You know, he's a uh, he's a man of integrity, and he's he's uh, you either love him or or don't really care at all, whatever. Uh, but uh, we 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 were on the love part with him. It took us it took me a while to just figure it out, but uh, he was awesome. He was awesome, Frank. He's out here every day. He's He's got a girlfriend, and, and uh, yeah, he's he's in Fort Worth just living the dream. See, Chris, so the counter to your point is that if someone's beaten Reese, he must be really good, so you have my attention. <laughs> yeah, this is true. This is true. So let's, let's, let's look forward to the season here, Coach. So we start out with the, uh, the Big 12 that I affectionately refer to as the Big Six, and uh, – you know, we had obviously a lot of the fans are, are probably aware of some of the history that happened with uh, between Baylor and TCU and one of the recruits from last year. But I'm I'm really looking forward to that, whether he uh, comes or not. Uh, but where where is that match this year? Is it at TCU this year? I believe you must be speaking about Baylor. Uh, yeah, yeah. I uh, that's at uh, that's at Baylor this year. It's at Baylor. Okay. I'm so, getting old. Uh, I'm, Where did we play? Yeah. Them? yeah. No, 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 no. We actually, we played them. We played them at, at, Baylor. at Baylor. We play at TCU this year. We play at okay, yeah, TCU. I, yeah, I watched the match, I thought, and it was at Baylor last year. So, yeah, I'm looking. So, with that match at, at TCU, I mean, that's got to be, I mean, obviously, there's just, there's got to be good rivalry regardless, uh, you know, with all of you between Baylor, yourselves, and, and Texas, uh, the three Texas schools in the Big 12. But, that, I mean, that's got to be something the guys are all really looking forward to, I would assume. Yeah, I mean, you, you, it'd be interesting. It'd be interesting to see who who's on their, on their team come January. It'll be yeah. almost amazing in a certain way uh, how yeah. things work out. Again, I can't, I can't say how happy I yeah. am the way things turned out for us. I think, I think we're, 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 we came out on top on what, what, with what happened. We got two guys from the Czech Republic that, that can play and we love them and they're committed. And um, so, yeah, we'll see. It'll be uh, we 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 won't we won't let too many people know exactly what happened just to make sure not you know nobody uh, <laughs> nobody gets heckled too much. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but no. uh, I don't know. We'll see. You you'll know my competitiveness, I guess, on that day. No, uh, absolutely. So how well, how are you looking at at that at the conference when you when you size it up? I mean, obviously, you know, you Baylor and and Texas, but then I mean. Even with the other other schools in there, uh, what's uh, I mean, how, how do you see things shaping up for the conference? I mean, is, yeah, I mean it's are, I mean you could you could say I mean I hear that Spaziri is going to Texas in January. That's a huge huge addition. We absolutely loved loved him uh, in the in the recruiting process. We just didn't have any money for him, but but he's he's going to come in. And I feel he feels a a void there that they had that they needed somebody to come in and be able to play three, four for them. I believe he'll be able to do that. Uh, Cleve Harper might have something to do with that. I guess he just beat him, but that'll be interesting. 
So they're they're one of the teams that I believe can win the whole thing again. I think they could go back to back. They have the players to do so. Uh, Baylor is loaded as as well. They have a lot of good players. Uh, it'll be you know if Brooksby shows up uh, or not. I I assume he is because I haven't heard that he's not. It's just hard to believe somebody would turn down a hundred a hundred ten thousand dollars to go to college uh, yeah, yeah. at that level. That's incredible. Um, you know, I got to take some recruiting lessons, I guess. Yeah, and then, yeah there's something, something there. And I've, I've heard the same. Every coach I've talked to said the same thing. Like, nobody nobody believes he could come back, but every coach I've talked to says, I think he's coming back. I haven't heard anything. Yeah, no, it's just hard to believe, right? It's hard to believe. Just just the level, the level that he was playing at this summer is, is uh, I'm all for college tennis. Uh, but when you're winning rounds at Grand Slams, I think you're – and you qualified. I think yeah. it's it's a uh, it's a great and I'm happy. I I I love Jensen. I think yeah. I think I hope I wish Jensen the best. He's he's a good kid. Uh, it was unfortunate what happened, but he's a, he's a good kid. I think he's just the people around him that are advising him. That's that's who I would put I guess the blame, not so much on on, on Jensen if there is any blame, whatever whatever the right word is. Uh, but I wish him the absolute best. So. Uh, he's worked his butt off to get to where he's at, and he nobody loves tennis more than 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 Jensen Brooksby. So I wish him I wish him the best. Oklahoma State, Oklahoma State. I feel like they not only did they get some good players with transfers from Arizona State, Kowalski, but also I watched their players play. They've done a great job with the players they had last year, and I feel that they're all better. I, I watched them play this summer. I mean this fall. Again, some really good results. I think they're they're a team that could sneak in and win the Big 12. And then uh, and then you have Texas Tech and Oklahoma. Oklahoma did lose some players at the top, but Nick does a great job. It'll be interesting to see what you know what happens with them. They're always good. They're always very good in doubles. And then Texas Tech, uh, new coach, a lot of changes, maybe some additional motivation, and uh, we get to play them at Lubbock which is never fun. It's uh, one of the worst places to play. So, so it'll be, you know, it'll be, we'll be, we'll have to bring our A game to get out of there with a win. And Chris yep. calls it the big six. And that obviously refers to the fact there's 16 uh, teams in the big 12 tennis conference for the men's side. Uh, now, because that happened, you know, conference play happens later in the year. You have plenty of time to work out your lineup beforehand. And you've mentioned uh, you still have a bunch of things to figure out on that front. But after losing guys in Rybakov and Stalder, who are not only singles players, but also both contributed in the doubles lineup, you have the chance here to, you know, toy around with the teams a little bit, see what works, what doesn't. What have you seen this fall from your guys to give you some ideas as you head into the dual match season? Yeah, we've had we've had some good some good results there with Jake and, and Alistair. Looks like that'll be a team to to continue uh you know playing together. We might just go with nationalities, you know, we'll just go the Brits together, the Czechs <laughs> together and then, you know, I don't know, the Latins or the the uh, love languages uh, with the French and Argentinian. I mean we <laughs> I don't know. We had a, a interesting situation with Sander, Sander Jong. He wasn't here this fall because uh, he had some uh, just health issues with his stomach. And he's a great, great doubles player. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that he's he's ready to go because he's he's one of our better doubles players. So he can he can fit in there. He finishes the season strong with Luke with Luke Fomba. They had a huge win at Mississippi State. Um, which was critical for us to win that day. I felt that that was amazing uh, the way they played at number three doubles that day. Uh, at one point, guys, my my heart rate. I was just sitting there. We're at five one, and I looked at my uh, watch when my heart rate was a hundred and forty two. Just sitting there, I'm like, wow, I need to chill out. But uh, it was fun. So so yeah, you're right. The doubles will be, will, you know, if if we can tell you that we're better in May. Then we were in uh, in January. Then I consider that a, a big win because we there is definitely some work to do. We have a lot of things to figure out. Reese Stolder was it, it was amazing. I, I he I don't think he ever got the respect he deserved, but 
didn't matter who we put with Reese, they were going to be good. Uh, so we get, we're missing that big time. I agree, coach. That's what I've been saying. Yeah, you're right. You're hundred <laughs> percent right. A hundred percent right. No, absolutely. And I mean, given that you have that time before conference play and your team, I know you're hosting uh, for the, for the indoors, one of the ITA kickoff regions, but you have time to play around with your lineup. Is that something you will do, you know, regardless of where it stands? Because as we've talked about, there are really six, seven, eight guys who could see shots in the lineup and hold their own. Correct. I would say we have 10 guys. We have 10 guys. Uh, Max Kurzman, when he had to step in two years ago, at the end of the year, he had some great results beating Baylor. So he's he's in, in the consideration as well. And him and Roldan won at the NCAAs against Utah State. So I would say we have 10 guys, 10 guys that can all jump in. Yeah, we'll, we'll play around. I just, with our schedule, we have a tough schedule. So it'll be, you know, it won't be easy to just keep looking, but uh, we'll, we're playing a doubles-only event in January in Dallas, um, one of the first weekends of the year before the season starts, and that's one of the one of the reasons is just to get us some, some playing time. So you guys are 100% right on. So how about go- – have you guys sat down really and talked about goals for the year, or do you just start with, hey, let's let's, you know – do you break it down into sections of kind of the pre-conference to conference and then, and then the postseason, or how, how do you look at the season with the guys? You know, we don't, we, we never do. I don't know if that's bad or, or good, but we don't, we don't. We've had, we've had so many injuries for the last four or five years and so many things that changed and so many guys that step up and play differently that I feel it's almost, it's almost a waste of time to look too far ahead we know that we have a really tough schedule. We know that one of, you know, first first goal is to go to Arizona State and, and get a W and then get through the – win two tough matches here with Florida Atlantic and Notre Dame and Arizona and see if we can get, get to the indoors, just get there. So we, we literally take it – it sounds cliche, but we take it one match at a time. Uh, there, 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 there is a little bit of sort of the indoor season type thing, and then the outdoor season once the indoors finishes. So I do think about, okay, indoors, what will we look like, and then outdoors, what will we look like? We have more options this year. We have, we have, ten guys that can step into the doubles. We have maybe ten guys that can play in singles, and and it may it may depend on whether we're playing indoors or outdoors. So it'll be it'll be fun. Uh, it'll take a little bit more, more uh, sort of coaching on our part to get the most out of so many guys. In the past, we didn't have too many options at the bottom, and now we do. So, so that'll be a, in a way a, a good problem to have. But I know it. I've in speaking with other coaches. It, it, it can cause problems, I guess, when you have too many guys and, and they all just feel that they deserve to play, and and you're gonna make those tough decisions. Is you talk about the the pre indoor season and kind of the early season schedule and some some of what I'd love to see these last couple of years are a lot of the big teams scheduling each other and you talk about you and Florida how, how many year deal do you and Florida have to play each other is it just is, it, is this the end or is it go on past this year No it, we just skip this year um, and then we are we're back on. I love playing those guys. I have so much respect for those guys. Uh, that will. I'm hoping that that is a program that we play every single year. So yeah. we uh, we let them win here at home this last year, just so they come back, and then we can get them. <laughs> good play. Good play. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm curious because it is two separate parts of the year, but something your team found out last year, and it was an exceptional Big 12 conference, obviously, between yourselves, Baylor and Texas, who all made the NCAA quarterfinals, and Texas obviously goes on to win the national title. But you guys were one of the two teams, I believe it was you and the UNC uh, men, who went on the road for that round of 16 format last year and won your away matches now. You mentioned not having goals, but I'm curious, A, what your thoughts were on that change in the format, and B, given how valuable Fort Worth can be as a home environment to you guys, 
is that something you will circle this year having had to go on the road last year? Yeah, uh, that was, so I'll answer the, the format change. I thought it was incredible. I thought it was a great experience for everybody that our guys felt the importance of, of that match. Mississippi state couldn't have been a better host. We had a lot of weather issues and I felt they were very professional about it. It was a perfect example that had that situation happen and there was more than just one match going on. It would have been easy, the easy out for, for us to just go indoors. And uh, even though Mississippi State did want to play outdoors, it didn't matter. They the matches should be outdoors if if you can. And so just from that, from from the logistical side, it was a great move by the IPA to do that by the NCA to do that. And then the experience, it was a um, it was it was a lot of fun to just go there for one match in 22 days. And that's uh, you know. Would we love to host that? Yes, at the same time, to be able to go on the road and get that win. I would consider that that win at Mississippi State one of the best wins as a program since I've ever been around. Uh, I would have to really kind of look at every year, but it's it's right up there. I can't think of a bigger win than going on the road and, and beating that team, what they had with their history, with their record at home, with their coaches their crowd. It was, it was incredible. So I'm glad that we, we were able to experience that. Yeah. And, and, and Alex, I, I tell you, I have to give, uh, I give uh, coach Roditi some credit too. After the match, he came and, and he can attest to this. There, you know, one, we have, we have one particular fan there that is just, I mean, it's insane how good he is at getting in the players heads and getting it even in coach because coach came up to him after the match and said, you are very good at what you do. I knew where you were every single moment of the match. <laughs> and and he and it was never dirty. It was never right, but he's just he knows exactly how to get at you. And uh and those guys took it well and you know, they were the better team that day. They they beat us and uh and they did their thing. Yeah, no, he was incredible. He was. And I think I said, you know, we would love to have one of you at uh, back in Fort Worth. And it, it was great. I mean, we, right we, in the heat of the moment, everyone knows I'm, I'm competitive. I'm, I'm emotional. It took it took everything I had not to not to get upset about it. Even he was doing nothing wrong, just from a competitive point of view. He, and, and he did a great job. And, and I just kept telling myself, this is this is exactly what what we want in college tennis. This is really good for everybody. Just suck it up, you know. So it was. It was it was a lot of fun. I, I think uh, he just didn't realize that Luke Fomba didn't speak English yet, so that's probably <laughs> why he wasn't as as effective as he could have been had he been speaking in French. You know. <laughs> oh, good point. Yeah, that's the beauty of college tennis, and uh, you know we've talked about Fort Worth a little bit, and you, you guys playing there. You've obviously done so much uh, with your program to incentivize fans to not only go to a match but to keep coming back. And you know, I, I want to do a rapid fire before we wrap up, but I guess my last serious question to you is, you know, how valuable is that Fort Worth environment? Is it to be able to play in front of those home fans to your program, and what can we? expect from you guys any fun stuff planned for 2020 yeah i guess we'll have to wait to see what <laughs> what comes out but we we you know our guys love playing in front of our fans i think our opponents love playing in front of our fans it's it's fun it's exciting i feel like it's it's very clean the crowd is is very far away from the court so it's not they're not on top of you it's just um a very friendly welcoming you know, it is competitive, but very sort of healthy competitive, in my opinion. And, and something that I hope that we've had some opponents where they would say, if you had to pick a match or two that you'll remember, you know, forever. I would hope that some of our opponents would say playing at TCU in front of that crowd was, was a lot of fun. I, I, you know, I'll never forget whatever the whether it was the music the live music or the or the sororities out there or you know the tailgate outside going on people coming in and out the kids running around 
whatever it is, uh, that, that they remember that when they're, you know, my age, uh, with running around with the kids. So, yeah. And to all our, our college tennis fans out there, if you're planning a college tennis trip, Fort Worth's the place to go. I haven't done it yet, coach. It's on my list. I will get out there at some point. I promise you that, you know, maybe that, uh, TCU Baylor match could be a good one to watch. Ooh, a little game day action. I like it. Well, uh, we'll see what we can do. I'm putting it in the queue. Um, but there yeah. is one last thing I want to do with you, and you are a fun guy who has, again, a lot of passionate thoughts about the game of college tennis because you care about it so much. And, you know, we at Crack Rackets also care about college tennis and, you know, the game itself, how to develop it moving forward. So what I want to do with you and what we've been doing recently with some of our guests is in lieu of a rapid fire segment, I have some proposals for how we could change college tennis to make it even more fun. You guys have embraced so much of that at Fort Worth. I feel like you're the guy to ask. Does that sound good to you, Coach? Okay. All right. And, uh, Chris, uh, uh, you can give comments after Coach, but um, West Off, give me a rapid-fire sound effect, please. All right, Coach, do you want to start with a really goofy one or a semi-serious one? Let's go with uh, goofy first. All right, we'll start with the goofy. So, I get the fact that we are always going to have to pick, you know, who serves, who returns at the beginning of the match. But in lieu of the coin flip, which is just boring, on the six flights of singles and three flights of doubles, to get the competitive spirit going from the moment you step on the court, they do rock, paper, scissors instead. Okay, well, as long I love it, I think it's fun. I think it's fun. You got me. 100%. 100%. I think it would be a lot of fun. You just have to specify, is it one, two, go? Or is it no. one, two, three, go? Because we've had battles with that argument. So, <laughs> so knowing, I knowing our I coaching structure and, and how confusing some simple rules can be broken, I guarantee <laughs> you that will happen. Oh, we won't even be talking about the hooks during the match. It'll be, he hooked me in Rochambeau at the start. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 may need, uh, we may need Playside to be involved with this and get a, you know, a replay. Did he do it in time? Did he change his sign once he saw my sign? Which is what I like. I like that aspect. You know if someone's going to hook you from the get-go. But I would say one, two, three, shoot. The other alternative that Dave Mullins suggested was we have the coaches play a drop and hit point, and that's how they decide. I like that. Yeah. I like that, but, but I, 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 you know, there might be some coaches that are – that are, there's no way, you know. I would pay to watch you and Boland play a point. I love Brian <laughs> Boland. I'm such a fan of his. I would watch the point. It would be incredible. Well, I would make that point as long as I can make it. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. All right, now we'll go with the semi-serious one. Um, because whatever – it's a 4-3 match. That's a wonderful thing. And at places where there are outdoor facilities, sometimes this isn't a problem. But let's say it's a match on court one and a match at court six that are the last two on. We never want these people playing next to each other. But as a favor to the fans, as a favor to the teams, we allow the players to move courts so that there's one court in between them. The teams can be on both sides of that middle court and all of the fans can gather in one area. That that that's a tough one. I'm I'm I feel like I'm very open to a lot of things. Just knowing how players are, changing courts in the middle of the match, it'll be a revolution. They they're, <laughs> they're gonna hate it. It's just you, you know. We're so we're so uh, I don't know routine oriented. Uh, what what's the word? What you believe in in the good luck or bad luck? Uh, uh, superstitious, Very, yeah, superstitious. So it's going to be one of those that, uh, yeah, if you're winning, there's no way you, you're changing <laughs> anything. Yeah, if you're down at Santa break, you're like, yeah, I'll change courts. Why not? So that's going to be that's going to be tough. I don't think I don't think guys will will go for that. It'll be from the players from the players' perspective. It's going to be hard for them to agree. I like the – I do. I mean, we as coaches get split up at times as well where we don't know which one to go or where to go. Some sites have three and three, and, and you got to just pick one. So I, I get I get the point. 
Um, I just don't see the guys going for it. Chris, your thoughts? Yeah, well, I, yeah, I'm, I'm with Coach. I, I don't see the guys going for that. But, but to his point, you know, what I would, what, what I would love to see as kind of a follow-up, Coach, is how about as these programs build new facilities, nobody's allowed to build courts if it's not six together. <laughs> So you you're not a fan of the three and three. I oh I, I hate the three and three. Even worse are the two two and two, or it's the indoor facilities that you go to where yeah four you can't and two. See, yeah you can't even see it. They're like literally different sections of the building. Uh, like say you have it Virginia at the Boar's Head or wherever, where you don't even know what's going on in the other section of the building. Right. I mean, um, uh, I mean you're right. Yeah, that's that's a killer. You're right. Um, we are actually in the middle of sort of redoing our, our outdoor facilities. So we're thinking about all those things. I'm glad that you, you tell me how you feel about that. I, uh, you know, I get distracted by anything. So if I'm in a court with six in a row, I'm literally watching six matches thinking that I'm coaching three of them, which is ridiculous. <laughs> but, uh, uh, so for me, if I'm on two courts, it's probably the best thing f- for my coaching. Now I feel like I want to be watching everybody else and you know, maybe I could help other coaches, whatever, other courts. Uh, but um, as far as uh, just paying attention, <laughs> it does get me when it's six in a row. <laughs> no, but you're, you're right. I mean, that's the beauty. That's the beauty of college tennis, that you can you have six different matches going on. You should be able to watch them all and then kind of move around and, and not feel like you have to pick and choose. I agree with that. Especially the the doubles point being what it is, three matches in a row, the energy is palpable. I mean, it's just you, you have to have the, the the doubles next to each other. I hate it when they get split up. Yeah, that's, that's a big big difference. Big yeah, difference. I could not agree more. But all right, last one for you, coach, and then we'll let you go. And it's this one toggles the line between serious and not serious. Um, but as opposed to lineups one through six, which are great. We all love that, you know, the top ten is bottom down, whatever. We have coach submits lineups beforehand blindly. So neither team knows who's playing where. You as a coach get to take the risk of I'm playing whoever I want, one through six, and wherever the cards lie, have it be. Yes. Yeah, so I 100% have actually suggested it that – Six game set in double, six game set no add. There, there shouldn't be any any order, one, two, and three. I think anybody can beat anybody on a six game set. Mm-hmm. And whoever plays, whoever plays each other is gonna be a good match on a six game set with no add. So I a hundred percent agree in doubles. You should just put them out there and, and, and just play a little bit of a guessing game. In singles, in singles, the, the problem would be where, you know, we're playing Mississippi State. Who doesn't want to see Nuno and Alex Ravikov go at it? It's true. <laughs> and that's, it's it's almost too big of a loss not to have that going on, you know. Um, and and I I get it. I've I've actually said exactly what you said. You know, it's, don't worry about. Just put them out there, uh, but you you do open you op- you do open the uh, the door to some teams that are maybe ranked 45 can be a, a team ranked two if the right matchups happen where they have their best three players play the other team's worst three players and they squeaked out the doubles. You could have a team that uh, you know uh, maybe spendy beating uh, Ohio State or something. Yeah, well, which is why my twist is, and Chris, I'm sorry for cutting you off, but my twist would be that uh, to incentivize home matches, to make them that much more likely to see something special. Let's say it's 2015 and uh, Virginia's going on the road to Louisville. The, the home coach gets to see the away lineup, and so to make home courts matter, the home team gets to set the lineup. Oh, so you – Wow. <laughs> <laughs> You're way more creative than I've, I uh, will ever be, I think. You don't think some teams already have an advantage? 
Well, they may, uh, but I'm saying why not just really, really make upsets possible? Look, I just want my Michigan Wolverines to beat Ohio State. I just need to see it happen. <laughs> it's been too long, and this is my solution. Well, then I, need, I think you need to have a conversation with Adam, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. But yeah, it, it, that's, it's uh, that's tough. It, the problem is, you know, you could you 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 could end up with six matches, two, six two six two. Yeah. And and you know that's not that's not good for the for the for the fans or the sport. Yeah, as a team, yeah. When you look at it, like, oh my God, Louisville beat Virginia four three, but then you look at each match and it was six one six zero six zero six one six two, and then you know whatever, a few close matches and Louisville beat Virginia. And then also, how do you keep, uh, if, let's say that example of, I'm not saying Louisville, just Virginia. A Boston college who doesn't have scholarships. So you, it's hard to compete without scholarships. Um, you know, how do you get a Brandon Nakajima who could go the whole season Winning matches six one six one. How do you convince him that this is really developing him as a player? So that's the that's sort of the the bummer part. Um, yeah. Part of part of why someone like Brandon would stay in college is that he if he plays one, he's going to have a developmental type match every single time he's out there, and that's going to make him a better player. That's a very look. You're thinking about this logically, and I get that. Um, <laughs> but for me. The thing is, like, think about how much it would make sense because the good teams, and we'll let you guys hear, but the good teams, you know, four through six is where you differentiate yourself. So let's say one through three stack, whatever, four through six, not. It also makes doubles that much more important. And that's what I'm really all about. Yes. I mean, you know, at, at the NCAA, I think happen. it was, was it a year ago, a year ago that whoever won the doubles match won the match every single time? It was an NCAA, right? Final, right? Except, was that it? Was that the year? I think so. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, that that right there, that's that's enough. That's enough uh, help. I feel like you're you're kind of the uh, sort of an underdog type uh, heart. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you want to see blood. You want to see. Yeah. You want to see excitement. If you're asking me if I'm taking your side uh, or Chris's side of TCU MSU, I'd probably take in TCU. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great to that's great to know. That's great to know. Oh. So, I'm sorry, sure. Chris. Any, Chris, any final thoughts? No, no. I, I, I just been a lot of fun having you on, Coach. I appreciate it. We're really looking forward to the season, and uh, you know, and, and I'm personally looking forward to, to your guys. Uh, you know, make making my pick for the you know that you're going to be that you're winning. I've already said it, Coach. You guys are winning the Big Twelve this year. So you know, do, do me right now, okay? We'll we'll do our best. I promise you that we will give it our best shot. And um, All right. I'll, I'll leave you guys, Alex, with one thought. You know, maybe if you only have three courts, your opponents, the visiting team, can then play the guy again if they want to once oh, he finishes his match. You know, I brought up substitutions to our one of our producers, Jamie McDonald, and he laughed me out of the room. He's like, just no. He's like, you can't bring that up. Like, they're just going to say no. I, 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 uh, I told one of my, my guys in doubles during, it, during the regionals, I said, if this was any other sport, I'd be taking you out right now and putting <laughs> anybody else in. So I won't tell you who I said that, but when I said it, I go, oh, my God, chill out. <laughs> so mean. He looked at me like I was the meanest person in the world, but I was trying to make a point. That is so that, funny. Yes, other sports, you can just pull the guy out. <laughs> no, I can sit. Literally, if you hit one more ball to his backhand, you're out. Okay. It, 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 was, it was an example like that. It was actually an yeah. example of they had full control of we're going to play this guy every shot. And for the first 10 minutes, it was a complete opposite. I thought I was on TV just to see what I would do. It was uh, <laughs> unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, Coach, again, thank you so much for taking the time. Happy Thanksgiving to you, your family, and your team. And know that you are always welcome to join us on our Crack Rackets uh, team. Well, thank you, guys. And on behalf of all the coaches, I thank you for everything that you do. For, for co You've made college tennis better. Let's just put it that way. So. Appreciate all you, that you do, and happy Thanksgiving to all of you. No, really appreciate that. Take care, Coach. 
You got it. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Hope you enjoyed our conversation with TCU's David Rodidi, the coach, such a fun character. Really appreciate him entertaining some of my wilder thoughts, of course, entertaining and answering all of Chris and my questions, and then some, you know, should college tennis ever need a pundit coach Rodidi? He's got a long career ahead of him, but he is tailor-made for this media gig, so anytime we have the chance to talk to him, we always appreciate it. If you listeners have missed anything from our College Contender Series, check out our mini break. We're doing those every Monday night to be released on Tuesday for you. Thus far, we have done TCU, Mississippi State, USC, and UNC. Talked about those teams, Chris, Matt, and I, and then Chris and I had the chance, or just me, to interview all of those coaches as well. So something to listen to if you enjoyed this interview in that series uh, is something you are interested in as you want to get ready for the college tennis season. Of course, on the Great Shot podcast, we've got our best of the decade content going on right now. Uh, Myself and Jonathan Kelly should be recording, I think today or tomorrow, an episode uh, doing the best American storylines of the decade. That's going to be a ton of fun, so be on the lookout for that. Obviously, you could find all of this content at CrackedRackets.com, but for immediate, more immediate updates, check out social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, uh, Twitter. It's all at Cracked Rackets. Uh, we want to hear from you. Is there anything we're missing? Any teams we haven't covered yet you think we might not cover that you'd like us to? Do you want us to do a college tennis mailbag edition? All of these fun things we would very much enjoy, so just let us know what you guys want. And as always, please leave a five-star rating and review for the podcast on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to this. Huge shout out, as always, to the super producers, Max Fliegner and Daniel Westoff, who have a f- of an editing job to do, as always. I believe this podcast is being released this Thursday, so for the last time, happy Thanksgiving to all of you listeners. Hope you are enjoying some uh, time with family, enjoying football. I personally will hopefully be enjoying a Lions victory over the Bears as you're listening to this, but and as well as this weekend, a Michigan victory over Ohio State. We're coming for you, Ty Tucker. Be on the lookout. So with that in mind, though, for our super producers, Max Fliegner, and Daniel Westoff for our lovely guest today, TCU men's tennis head coach David Roditi, for my wonderful co host, College Tennis Ranks Chris Halliors, and from all of us here at Crack Dragons and the Tennis Channel Podcast Network, I'm your host, Alex Gruskin. Uh, thanks for listening and happy Thanksgiving, everyone. We will see you next time. <laughs>